Right, we're going three, two, one, action! <laughs> welcome, welcome back to the 2019 season of the Pit Lane Podcast, everyone. Back you, your host, myself, Arav, Callum, and Tom. It is good to be back. It's been a long winter. We've taken a bigger break than usual compared to previous seasons. But guys, we are back for another season of podcasts. How are we feeling about that? Fourth season, this is. Oh my God, I'm going to be grey soon. Like, it's actually, the fact that this is starting again is um, very exciting, to be fair. There's been a lot of promo on, on the uh, on the socials, and now that we're back doing this, this is when I know that the season's about to start, and uh, I think Australia couldn't come quick enough for me, to be honest. Yeah, mm. it's, it's really, really exciting, personally. Again, it's a sign. F1's back, and uh, got to get them calendars out, get them... Alarms ticking for Australia. Oh, God. But, uh, don't remind oh, me. Dear. Don't I remind me. about that. I can't wait. To, <laughs> yeah, that, that, I'm buzzing. That's an annual thing of that podcast. All three of us just look really tired. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's bags under the eyes and whatnot. Yeah. It's just, uh, yeah. We but... were just, uh, no, the thing is, most of us have got back in bed after we shot that podcast, to be honest, because yeah, that pretty was much. an Little... experience getting up at that time. But we do it, and especially we do the FP1 because... Oh, yeah. You know, it's FP1. You've got, to, you've, got you've, to, you've got to watch. I don't ever watch <laughs> FP1, but... <clears throat> Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll say to, I, I I watch. That's the only FP one I usually watch. Usually, but um, you've got to because it's the hype, and then you question it in, on Friday evening when you're so tired. But um, yep. you know, <laughs> yeah, definitely. I always I always lo- like looking at the onboards of the cars on FP one because that's the first time. Like they show it sometimes a little that's bit of testing. True. Like we've that's seen the true. we've seen the Ferrari McLaren on board in testing, but usually FP one Australia is the first time you see the onboard shots, which obviously is is uh, gamers is kind of interesting for for the F one game in a kind of nerdy way. But also just seeing the cars out for the first time in actual anger in a way. Like testing, obviously you see the cars, but we know they're gonna be sandbagging and whatnot and that's I'm sure that'll be something we're going to discuss in a little bit in this podcast about sandbagging because uh we're going to go through <laughs> uh team by team I guess that's the kind of easiest way and talk about winter testing first of all if there's any new big news we missed about uh the teams each over the winter break then we'll kind of mention that uh but also just talk about testing week one and then we'll uh, do the same again for week two but week one has been pretty enjoyable obviously uh I, I had a very enjoyable week one because i went to testing for day one but how have you guys weird felt <laughs> weird fl- <laughs> you, just, flex, you had to okay. flex that <laughs> <laughs> but uh how, how did you guys find testing as a whole from uh, just like the perspective like because obviously they've done great coverage once again this year from f1 directly so it was enjoyable to watch i think yeah, yeah. Um, the, the the weird thing was this is probably I mean obviously apart from the fact that it was broadcast and now F the F one channel are churning out content like mad and shout out to them for doing it uh, because it really does because it used to be that testing was very you was very in the dark like you just read read like the odd news article and it's like going back really to the know. old days with teletext <laughs> exactly <laughs> like you'd have to get teletext up to see how many laps Mercedes yeah. has turned in and everything like that but. I, I, apart from all that, it was a very weird testing because everyone was really reliable. Like it was, I was going to say that a lot of laps. Uh, yeah, there was just so many laps, and there was no big news. Like apart from Williams, there wasn't anything to really were happy shock us. As well. Like, yeah, yeah, like, no one's in the shit, really. No Apart one's really struggling. <laughs> well, yeah, well, but they still managed to turn up and it was exactly what Will Buxton you know said what? in Paddock Pass. It's, you know, admirable that a toothpaste can get out on track and run, so you know what? It's good on them, good on them. <laughs> I was waiting a, for the Aquafresh sponsor. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a, a good, good signal. <laughs> it's a good signal when a, a thick liquid paste can get out on track. And run <laughs> it did well. But also, I mean, regarding the, uh, the livery... Um, We've got to say, and I don't know, I haven't actually spoke to either of these two about this. I genuinely think in this is the best looking grid I think we've seen yeah. in a very, very long time. Like, especially in the V6 era, at least. I would agree. It's getting, it's getting up there. I would I agree. Last, ever since McLaren went back to orange, the grid's been be- like better. I just wish the Renault was more yellow. Then we're talking. Hashtag more I yellow. Think, I think they've we're done a, a green car I, as well. I, think, I think it's a good mix for the shade of yellow they have, personally, at the moment. I yeah. think if they were to do more yellow, they'd have to definitely go for a bit of a less fl- fluorescent yellow, uh, personally. Yeah, maybe. Um, I think we're missing a good green Caterham Jaguar green car. I, never <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't. I don't really like the slime shebang. snot green. I wasn't really into it. I'm the only one that liked them. I don't. <laughs> I, I'm not missing any snot green. If like a, if a Lambo fluorescent green came to the grid in some kind of fashion, then I. I, I mean, it is British racing it. green, so maybe we should exactly. kind of embrace that. But I don't know. I wasn't really that interested. But we have got like colours such as the black and gold with the Hass and the controversial rich energy that have been beefing this week. Hashtag <laughs> 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 Red Bull. 
Because <laughs> we always look into testing times, obviously. Yeah. Because testing definitely. is yeah. basically Has the championship been. order already. Rich Energy yeah. know what they're talking about when the, when they say yeah, Has beat Red Bull on track. Yeah, definitely, definitely so. Um, and obviously Superior the performance. the Matt Ferrari, which I haven't talked to either of you about either. Um, I personally love it. I think it looks banging, especially in person. Yeah. It looks godly. Yeah. No, uh, you can see in the pictures. It looks great. I love it. Um, at first, I didn't I really like it. First. Yeah, I was a bit like that. Like, Thing is, I know, I know why the sponsors are in black now. It was explained as to why. Um, basically, when it, if the sponsors would have been white, if you look at a Marlboro pack, um, you've got this red and white with the kind of V-ish shape on the cigarette packet. It's like a little tri- triangular shape on the packet. So um, with a white and red combination, it clashes. So basically, right. um, those mission winner sponsors that are in white because they have a black background, which isn't necessarily Marlboro color combination. It's black and white. So, for example, I think the barge board has a black and white one. Yeah. Um, it's only those areas where there's red, where the mission winner right. is in okay. black. Because it basically to get around the tobacco thing. Because well, there's a rumor that they might have to take the sponsors off for Australia. Well, because it's because really? because a commission Australia is only Australian commissions have brought it up. Because <laughs> um, I think there's I think European commissions did look into it, but I don't think they they kind of went through with it. But Australian ones are still banging on about um, how it, it's a little bit too fishy. Uh, obviously, yeah. also at the same time, actually, also just matte black looks better than matte white though as well. From a, just a yeah, visual yeah, standpoint, without a doubt, yeah, the matte black works better. Like if it was white, the matte kind of finish basically wouldn't work as well I don't think um, so I think just but also better. with it's nice to see another matte car because obviously it's only really been Red Bull that yeah, yeah. they went matte back in 2016 and it does look nice but obviously their car is mostly dominated by darker colours so that's why it works so much so that's why the, the Ferrari but at first I think I don't know they're just the studio lighting it just looked a bit Odd. It was a studio light. It was a studio yeah. light. It, it it's actual is. natural sunlight. It looks really mm. great. And I really like the fact they've gone back to the OG Ferrari style numbers at the very front of the car. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I love that love that. that logo. That it's I I think it, I think Ferrari make that lettering themselves because literally if you type in Ferrari numbers, it's that same font yeah. lettering basically. It is, yeah. They've used it on previous years, um, before they did the whole white triangle thing. As much as that was a nice retro throwback. I really enjoy seeing those numbers back uh, on the car, especially that big number five. It looks nice on the front. But, but um, also, yeah. shockingly, uh, like, uh, contrasting, it's weird to see two top teams radically shake up their liveries as well. Because Mercedes, yeah, yeah. I mean, they teased us and went, oh, we've got this camo. And <laughs> they, they royally took the piss on Twitter. They're yeah, like, oh, they look did. at this, look at this, look at this. But they actually shocked us and have actually made a decent a really looking nice silver arrow. Like, really, really nice. nice. I love the little, it's the tiny thing of the Mercedes uh, three prong little spikes that mm. like dart, dart around the bottom of the engine cover, the back end. It looks, uh, uh, yeah, pretty really nice, really nice. Um, That's really beautiful. But really is. Are there any more liveries to talk about, lads, or should we get into the actual uh, I mean, some performance you know, stuff, maybe? <laughs> there was that one off Red Bull one, in, you know, when they launched a car. Which I didn't Shame. like. No? I didn't like I That was like, like an or, or, origami style thing. Um, it was mm. all right. I loved it. Because yeah, d- even even on the on the base coat like dark blue, it had gloss patterns and matte patterns. Yeah, I don't know. I just you couldn't really read it. I, I wasn't really. It was definitely not a livery that I could live with for a whole full race season. That was no. very much a, a launch no. testing livery sort of I style. Think if, if they'd done the Red Bull normal colours with that livery pattern, it would look pretty cool. If that makes sense. So like you still put the yellow on there. I feel like there yeah. might be just too much going on though. And that obviously that's why they kind of launched it like that in a way. Um, to but also I think just to wrap up the liveries before we actually get into the nerdy bit of testing uh, and not in or every livery. Um, shout out to McLaren because yeah, that McLaren, is yeah. pushing one of my favourite cars on the grid. I, like that yeah, is without it. a doubt I one of my favourite cars. The extra blue just works. It just works really well. Like. And also just the, the bodywork on the car. Like I think, you know the studio shots, the one that's kind of like face on, but a little bit higher up? Yeah. Because mm. the wings it's got sticking out like every other car. It looks like a spaceship, an orange spaceship. <laughs> it looks it so does, scary. it does actually. But it needs to be sponsored by Iron Brew. <laughs> just saying it does, it's, it's, it does. It, if you look at it it's like it looks like yeah, an iron brew, can, iron brew car and I, I i kind of like fancy an iron brew every single time i look at it so but then i have to channel my inner scottish so let's not do that <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about uh testing then and winter stuff so we'll go team by team we'll go in the 2018 championship order because it seems fair like that so we're going to start off with the mercedes guys the silver arrows in terms of uh changes over the winter 
I can't really think of. Was there many ma- major changes really? Uh, no. Bottas having a beard is a change. <laughs> That's a the only change a, in the whole a, of Mercedes. Yeah, I guess he's he's definitely fighting for for his career now this season. Um, yeah. But apart from that, I mean, not really a lot of change really. I mean, they've just stayed solid and done their job. And <laughs> I guess we in can a move. year where pretty much everything's changed in some way, shape, or form. Mercedes, I think, are the only team that nothing's changed. Really, yeah. At all. Solidified. Uh, it's just a livery change, pretty much. Yeah. So yeah, e- even their philosophy when it comes to doing testing as well, and as we've seen, they've been changed, on pretty yeah. much the hardest tire. I remember back in the day, they used to literally live on the medium tire. They'd not, they'd yep, not move yep. from that urine testing. Mm-hmm. Uh, as for what C they're on, <laughs> C1 through 5, I'm not entirely sure. Well, it's it's really going to get onto that. It's We're really simple. That. It's not that complicated. And also it isn't, time, but it's just a bit weird remember, saying it. You need to remember, you'll never actually need to say C something for the I entire know, rest of the good. season. Yes. After testing, the Cs don't matter. It's just soft, meat, it's soft <clears> medium, and hard. Yeah, Which sorry. is good, but I, I, I'm not into. I mean, it took me a while to get my head around the fact that the C5, because sometimes I thought, I thought logically C1 would be the quickest. I don't That's know. What I thought, I That's thought what I that thought. that way around would be better. But anyway, because we're not, we've ranted plenty of times about tires on this podcast. We're not starting off 2019. In, <laughs> yeah, but the same Mercedes. Way. Yeah, Mercedes. They, uh, pre- yes, they have the same philosophy. This far, yeah, has been pretty much a lot of high fuel running, especially in the first two days. They very much did. High fuel running, but a little bit of low fuel in the in the day three, day four, because we saw some faster times from Hamilton and Bottas. And actually, uh, Hamilton wasn't a probably the fastest lap they would have had. And then he had to abort it because he nearly crashed into, into Kubica, who was going a little bit slow. Oh yeah, some, I remember um, that. Yeah, test runs in the in the Williams car for only like the second time that day. Um, but yeah, very much the same as last year. But we've got to remember last year, Mercedes were like the fifth or sixth best time in testing. They rocked up to Australia and got pole by eight tenths with Hamilton or something. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> but very much an evolution rather than a revolution uh, of a car when it comes to, obviously, yes. with the new front wings. The front wing itself was actually quite what we expected, unlike other teams, which is... Very much the Mercedes way sometimes. Sometimes they do like to stick on the straight and narrow, but just nail it. And that's exactly what yeah, they've done possibly. with that front wing. I think uh, and as, had the obviously, same wing concept since like 2015 now. I think Toto Wolff is... Uh, he did it. I think Toto Wolff or someone else also did admit in a German interview or something like that. They are very much looking into and they have to research still a little bit the whole Ferrari and Alfa Romeo kind of extreme concepts yeah. uh, because there's a lot of talk in the paddock that that might be advantageous. But of course... The front wing basically dictates the rest of the airflow around the car, so that's a three, four month process if they want to change the shape of their front wing like that dramatically. So yeah. I think, like Cal said, they might just nail that concept because Red Bull, Horner said their numbers are looking good. So if their numbers are looking good, in theory, Mercedes just maybe tweak it a little bit, maybe and nail it. Their numbers could look good, and obviously yeah. they've gone with that philosophy. Yeah, so I think generally, generally the theme across all teams has been, with the exception of maybe Alfa Romeo. It's generally been a rev- an evolution on last year's cars, really adapted to this year's regulations rather than full-on overhaul. Well, I mean, apart um, from the wings, I think a lot of teams have drastically changed, though, including Ferrari. Um, Mercedes, maybe, uh, like Cal said, I think literally the Mercedes car, they just took off the cascade elements in a way um, yeah, and literally. just kind of walked <laughs> it a little bit, whereas Ferrari have gone a bit more extreme. But, I mean, their times, I've got them here. Valtteri Bottas did a 117.85 on uh that was on day four on uh, on the uh, softest available compound hamilton did a 117.977 on one step down of compound and that was on a use set whereas bottas was on, the, on a new set so clearly hamilton's still held back some time there and yes. i mean i don't know uh there's i say a lot more to say about mercedes i mean everyone's reliable so there's not much to say there i yeah, can't it's... think of any issue they had well i don't think they stopped out on track at all, no, which is no. a good sign. I know Mercedes had a slight blip on the when Hamilton was in the cockpit, maybe day two or day three off the top of my head, um, because I think Will Buxton during commentary was uh, they they noticed that he suddenly slowed down. But then that might be that casual thing of oh let's just make out a story because a car's going a little bit slower when you might yeah. just be trundling around. So it might be a a dead story. But other than that, I don't think there's any there was, there was, there was, any there was... Bottas made a few comments saying they might need to bring a couple of upgrades for Australia for handling purposes. Yeah. Uh, that was because only the real car major thing. has a couple of. It um, seems like the Ferrari. Weird things it does. It seems like the Ferrari and like a lot of the other cars that have gone with this extreme style wing are easier to drive. Like they're, they're kind of 
not, I don't know, in, in race spec, I guess, maybe, they're kind of like, it seems like the drivers are very comfortable to get to grips with the car, whereas I think, yeah. like Bottas's comments, like Tom was saying, um, he thinks there needs to be some upgrades to improve it. So, Well, I think the comment was the car being on a knife edge, which is obviously very similar to how the car used to be, especially back in 2017, 2017. when it was labelled as a diva. Hamilton used to say that a lot, that yeah. it was on a knife edge a lot, so... Maybe they've gone backwards in that kind of way, which is intriguing to say the least. Um, but that's that's been a very much a Mercedes thing, and I think that that knife edge usually, usually they relates like to balance. That zone. But then also that you, balance usually relates to tyre wear. So wouldn't be surprised if that Mercedes is harder on its tyres than its competitors. Let's put it once that way. again. Yeah, I mean they tried to solve that last year with some grooved uh, hubs on the rear end, mm. and Ferrari have actually gone and copied that as well as McLaren. So mm. I think that's kind of equalised itself. But um, yeah, yeah, I mean Mercedes and Hamilton, uh, you know, obviously him being the main focus. I think like uh, I think Karun Chandok mentioned on on the Sky review on like day two or three. Basically, you know, these got these top guys. They, they like, as much as Hamilton never admits he's playing mind games and stuff like that. I think they're fully aware, they're aware of what they're doing. They don't want to show their hand at all. They've said Ferrari probably even aren't showing their full hand, which I think is true as well. No one shows their hand in testing. So I think Merck, um, to finish off with the statement we started with, like Cal said, pretty much the same as they did last year in testing. Just doing their own thing, doing their own program, not caring about the times too much. And that's that. and repeat. If it ain't broke. Exactly. Exactly. So moving on to their main rivals, the Scuderia, the Ferrari. Vettel and Leclerc. Obviously, exciting to see Leclerc in a Ferrari now. You know, that number 16 raid obviously yeah. had a few trips in the gravel. Uh, both Ferraris span at some point, which obviously uh, had people making jokes straight away about Twitter Vettel spinning. loved Vettel spinning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but Leclerc, spi- Leclerc span as well. And uh, also, I think Kibitza span the exact same spot uh, as well. So yeah. it was just a case of at the start on, of these days, it's so cold. I can test that because I DM'd you two whilst I was walking to the circuit on Monday. And I said, I cannot believe it is this cold in Spain. So I will fully say the teams are correct when they say the very start, it's easy to spin. Albon spun, Raikkonen spun. It is so cold in Spain right now in the morning. And then it heats yeah. up back to a normal Spanish temperature in the middle of the day. <laughs> By the sea, the humidity makes it really cold. I've said this before. It does get cold in Spain. Yeah. Trust me. It it's does. True. It does. <laughs> the Spanish Met Office we've just slipped yeah, into. Yeah, I was here. about to say. But, um... Tom just became a weather officer there. Oh, the but seaside breeze. <laughs> with Ferrari, um, I think we, obviously we've just praised Mercedes for doing their usual testing, bulletproof. I think Ferrari could say they're even more bulletproof because bearing in mind, I think they went through every single program they set out to do. Yep. They did more than what they needed to do. Hey, Vettel they said were turning the in laps near and perfection. That's yep, saying perfection. Something. That's saying and something, bearing yeah. in mind that Vettel said also that it was his best testing he's ever had, which yeah. is a very big statement to say he's been in many a Formula One car and he's been on the grid for many a year. So yeah. that's Probably a very, very big statement. They could have literally just done day one of testing and then packed up and left home because they did 160 plus laps in day one. Mm. And that's when Vettel set his fastest lap of 118.1 on used C3 tyres. So um, they literally could have just had that first day, 160 plus laps. Uh, fast up with testing up until that point they're like yeah, you know what we're done here Pass good. <laughs> yeah. pack it back up let's, let's keep developing Job done. Well, were they one of the teams I know Red Bull were one of the teams that were already bringing upgrades which was very shocking uh, did Ferrari bring any upgrades to I don't believe they no, brought any major ones no um, yeah Red Bull brought a new rear ring um, yeah Ferrari no I think they just yeah they just packed, after day one they just kind of kept doing their program basically and finished every single program did all the laps and whatnot, and that Ferrari just uh, obviously we talk, spoke, about, spoke about the wing. The paddock believes that is a you know maybe a, an advantage compared to um, compared to Mercedes and Red Bull. And we'll talk a bit about that wing style with Alfa Romeo later. But you got to um, remember that they've done over six hundred laps. Bearing in mind that's almost ten race distances. That's basically nine race distances. Let's put it that way. And it's going to be a lot more in the second. In the space of four they days, just announced they're going to do the Mercedes style. Uh, driver rotation for the second test. Oh, are they? Yeah. So they're going to do Leclerc and Vettel every single day, morning and evening shift. Yeah. I'm surprised so... they don't do that. I suppose most teams don't do that, to be fair. Yeah, because it, it, it surely keeps fresh. your driver fresh. Yeah, like. And also, it helps for session to session because I remember Ricardo said something about he did the afternoon for Renault on Monday 
and he felt okay with the car. But then he jumped in on the Tuesday morning when it was colder on track, so mm. maybe the car would feel worse. But the setup changes they made made hit the car feel better. So you can get that comparison when you do it like that, where you know you do, do the yeah. afternoon, then do the morning, which um, is something the drivers have really got to prepare for. Because obviously, when it comes to obviously they only have limited track running on Fridays, FP1 and FP2, they've got to nail the setup overnight and then go into a colder FP3 yep. and hopefully that the setup is good so then they can be set up for qualifying to it. I think it is a better strategy to do. And Mercedes have been doing it for ages. I swear they've been doing it for at least three or four years now. I think yeah. since they got Bottas. Oh, yeah, maybe since they got Bottas in 2017. So this is the third season that they've done it. And I feel like it just makes more sense because I think Vettel yep. was ready to go to sleep after day one, uh, after 150 laps of not racing for three months, three or four yeah. months. So... <laughs> <laughs> I think Ferrari though as well like you look at their car um, besides the front wing it's a very roll hoop a very tight roll hoop being let but other than that the car is generally very similar to last year's um, so Benotto said it's one of them ones where it's not really a revolution it's an evolution to the point where they've gone for the matte paint because the matte paint gives you around I think half a tenth in performance oh. or something like that <laughs> Um, over a race distance or something. I don't know what it was exactly, but it's quite a sh- to that point, yeah. they're, they're, they're like squeezing everything out. Yeah, of like this the, the way they evolved and everything was like yeah. two extremes, he said. So, um, yeah, I mean, and they, and they said a lot more a lot more work went to the engine perhaps than maybe the actual visual aspects outside the car, inside the car. They done a lot, a lot of work and obviously that's testament of the small little inlet. So maybe the cooling perhaps is a, is a bit better on that Ferrari yeah. works car. Um, and obviously, uh, Tom just mentioned Benotto. Obviously, they changed round and they got rid of Ribene and they've got Benotto. He's been at the team for a while now and it seems like he brings a good feel vibe because he's been there for a while. So I think everyone respects him very much. Yeah. And certainly he's Vettel. He's been there for very long. Vettel, very unlike long. with Ribene, Vettel has come out already publicly and kind of complimented Benotto and gone behind him very publicly in his interviews in, on day one it was in testing. So, um, Which is a good thing because getting on the good side of a four-time world champion is kind of, you know, yeah, it might, might give him a little bit of a push. You never know. Yeah. Um, it, it, it might stop him from spinning. But it's just, it's just a very good feel vibe for Ferrari. Uh, really yeah, the, 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 the vibe around the whole team is just... They like, feel really it was, strong this year. It's body language, isn't it? It's not yeah, testing fully. times. It's body language and car language. It's Everything just looks very, yeah. very and obviously secure. Obviously, they've got another injection of, you know... Feeling positive, obviously Leclerc is going to be buzzing about his first season yeah. Ferrari. So that's just a on top of all those other changes that had nothing to do with Leclerc. Is this injection of a new gun in as well? That's going to bring some positivity, I think. In Fresh the faces, they, so, yeah. they they will pick up that team. Very and, much uh, similar to what what's happened with Raikkonen. You know, Raikkonen looks like a much happier man basically, and just uh, a new kind of invigoration with this new change. You know, sometimes mm. change, you know, change of scenery. That's all you kind of need to perk yourself up. Same with Ricardo, perhaps as well. So. Uh, it's yeah. interesting because um, apparently Eric Bene was the one that made the call to get rid of Raikkonen for Leclerc and apparently that's what cost him his job. So, really? Um, wow. Yeah, that's, that's the rumour that went round and uh, apparently Ferrari wanted Leclerc to get one more year. That does make sense, bearing in mind Raikkonen's end of the year was probably his best era of like Ferrari in the second part of Ferrari, like 2014 onwards. Um, yeah. That was definitely his um, that's best the little spell. That's going around, I think. Also, for Ferrari, I think it's good to note the, me- the mechanic that got hurt at Bahrain. He's back in the team now. Oh, After yeah, I read break. about that. Yeah, he's, he's finally back, back which is which that's is a see. long recovery. That's almost a year. I mean, that, he could have been back earlier, but I think everyone's obviously been off for the last few months. Yeah, I think I think he posted True. on like Instagram on in like November saying he was fine and he actually returned to the factory. But in terms of like being back at track. Work. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Return back to work, but uh, yeah. So that's Ferrari. Very positive testing, really, for them. Uh, we talked about Red Bull a little bit, but getting to Red Bull proper. Obviously, the new partnership with Honda is a very much in a honeymoon period at the moment. They're loving life. They're complimenting <laughs> Honda left, they right, are. and centre. They put their e- feeding each other with strawberries. Yeah, they're on the beach together. They are what? loving they're life. Absolute I mean, goals aff. Their goals. Yeah. Are. That's that's putting it lightly. I've got to be honest with you. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting pretty extreme. I would go a bit yeah, more you know, in both, depth both with are, that. Both, are, both of them are hopping into the back shade. If Sunshine you know what. I mean. rainbows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they, they've got uh, a table for two and a long night, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, everything's looking very good between those two. And then, obviously, Horn has been very much like, this is the best engine I've ever seen. This is, I, I really, the best pre-season we've ever had. best pre-season they've I ever mean, had. I will believe that shocking. in terms of the way Horner said um, it was the best packaging ever. Because, obviously, they're now effectively a works team with Honda. So yeah. the chassis and design can be done in conjunction with dimensions of the engine and whatnot. So it's not about just strapping an engine in. It's literally building a car maybe around an engine 
uh, in terms of the engine bay and the engine cover. So I will believe that part. Obviously, there is a lot of just kind of, you know, pushing Renault, you know, having a fa- uh, a kind of hand to the face, basically, of like, yeah. you know, go away. It's basically we posted loads of Instagram posts saying, yeah, look at my new boyfriend. Look at yeah, how much yeah. better he is totally. than you. Ironic, ironically, a rumor going around is this engine they've got right now is a very early prototype they used to have when they were still with McLaren. The base. Oh, right. So right. it's an uh, early prototype. So it could be sort in the wounds. For, for both McLaren and more, Renault, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, so, it's it's look. It, uh, Renault obviously made a step up in the engine department because they raved about that at the car launch that they've had their best ever winter in terms of the engine, and that might be the step up that finally takes them to maybe fight the top three. But obviously, Honda, you know, they made huge strides. Um, you know, very reliable so far this testing. Uh, for them and Toro Rosso. And, mm. you know, last year we talked about that whole, you know, I think they are faster than Renault on outright pace. You just couldn't tell because the Toro Rosso was such a bad car at the end of the year. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I, I, you know, I I've genuinely still have a lot of positive signs about Red Bull. I've got a tinge of skepticism about if it fully takes them there, but I'm going to remain optimistic right now. Um, and in the terms is, of... I've got a bit of a funny feeling with that because I think the, the Red Bull Renault... Uh, engine saga reminds me of McLaren with Honda. I think when McLaren left Honda, Honda were then able to really develop as an engine producer. And I think the same thing might happen with Renault. I feel like Renault having Red Bull kind of constantly criticised them might have been the worst thing for them as well. And I think Renault might be able Mac. to also kind of break out that shadow. Now I see what you're coming from. Maybe, I feel like but they yeah. had another customer of McLaren that entire year and McLaren didn't yeah. complain at all, basically. Um, That's because they couldn't complain. Otherwise, well, if they yeah, complained sure. about Renault, no, that, they would not have an what engine. What I'm saying is, it, it, like, I thought, like with Honda, it was like, it was it was a very different situation because that was their only go to, and they did have to play massive catch up. Whereas Renault is kind of almost like just give us anything, and they couldn't yeah. bring any upgrade. They had to they, they admit they had to wait until this year to bring the biggest upgrades to the engine, uh, because yeah. last year I don't know whatever. The, development path they went with with the engine basically they didn't have an entire upgrade in terms of performance for the entire year pretty much um which is major so... really but no it probably regarding that is probably it's a good sign as well that red bull went away from renault because renault now actually have a proper works team and they can just concentrate exactly. on that works team alongside mclaren yeah like the problem was with red bull is obviously renault were always with red bull throughout the championship winning the years and then Renault came back in and it was almost like they had two works teams and then that's why Red Bull were like, hey, hold on, we, we were in this relationship first. How come you're going back to... Yeah, like, you you're, doing your own, was... you're doing your own project. But, yeah, you know. why are you doing your own project? This is not fair. So, yeah. Um, But yeah, just very quickly, like wrapping up with uh, Red Bull, um, like I mentioned before, one of the a team that is already bringing in upgrades, which yeah. means that obviously not only... I think obviously it could be an idea of, oh, we need, we've got these two different parts. Let's see which is better. Perhaps. I mean, but the fact Marco, that they're already doing that is very encouraging. Helmut Marco said the car will be um, quite different in Australia. They said that quite a few times, many seasons, but I mm. believe in very much this year, especially in terms of that, because, yeah, they've talked about... Yeah, I mean, they, they brought upgrades and, you know, changed out parts. And obviously yeah. a lot of talk has been about, you know, that V, the Red Bull Merck style wing compared to Ferrari. Horner says the numbers are good for this wing, so they'll probably stay with it. But I think they brought a new rear wing. I imagine there'll probably be some new looking barge wall bits and side pod end plate bits for test two, perhaps, and then Australia. So that car's got some mad rake as well. It's <laughs> that's got, still yeah, maintained. Ever, it's, that's definitely a, an evolution. That's got Red Bull rake written the all over Red it. Bull you rake. could fit a solid block of cheese under that car and it would... Yeah, it's... Uh, yeah. <laughs> that, that was an odd analogy. Yeah, the only, <laughs> I'm the only, not going to lie. The only, uh, the only like, you know, really like downside for Red Bull was uh, that little spin that Gasly had. But obviously yes. he can shake that off, you know, and what I thought was really good was he got out and just said, yeah, I just made a mistake there, really. Yeah. He's pushing a bit the, too much. They only lost an hour of testing. Yeah, so it wasn't really much, too much of an issue, actually. And also, I mean, they are the only team that have hit the wall, but, you know, sometimes you've got to race yeah. cars to crash cars. And, and You know, in terms of their drivers, you know, there's been a lot of talk about Verstappen, you know, keeping that level head of his over the winter and maturing even more over the winter, perhaps. And I really hope Verstappen can hit the ground running this time compared to last year. Mm. Uh, and then with Gasly, I, I think he's still a bit of a silver bullet in terms of being able to work with Honda. I think you won't see it in the short term, but I think long term over the season, I think him having that relationship with Honda for two years now with Super Formula 
yeah. and Toro Rosso. I think that will pay dividends for him in the long run. So that'll be interesting. He will be a very valuable asset for Red Bull this year, just but, um, just as a like benchmark, really. Yeah, but apart from that, I think that's, I think there's Red Bull kind of pretty much wrapped up there. Um, yep. and there's much else to talk about, and we can go to Renault. We kind of already blended Formula in very B. nicely Formula into B Renault. <laughs> Let's um, hope it's not Formula B this year, but it might more than likely be. It might just be a probably, closer. Perhaps it might be. But we'll see. I, I, <sighs> you know, obviously there's some hope that Renault and Alfa Romeo can maybe make that step of being 1. the bridge. 5. We'll see. But uh, yeah, Renault. So obviously, Ricardo's new place. Ricardo's talked about, you know, he's just, you know, getting used to the car. Really, at this stage, there's not much else he's really said about how the car feels. Obviously, you would imagine that's the way. I actually wanted. I forgot to mention that Hulkenberg said the fry looked bloody quick on the first day. So I thought that said a lot about, you know, already Hulkenberg stating that another car looks mm. bloody quick. So that's just a little kind of another another little bit about Ferrari looking like they're ahead, maybe a little bit, maybe or just feeling very good right now. But yeah, I mean. Renault, like I said, they say they have their, they've had their best winter so far in terms of engine dev. The car, obviously, they copied a lot of bits from Red Bull in the middle part of the car. The wing style is like a halfway house between Merck's and Red Bull style and Ferrari style. They've brought a lot of few new bits compared to their launch, so they hid some well, stuff. Their entire car, they said, is new except for the power steering this year. Yeah, so, so even though it looks similar somehow it's all different so it's a very big year for Renault though it is. It is. Uh, so, if anyone watched the paddock pass what um, Will Buxton mentioned about like whereabouts building he the asked house. the question of the building the house yes yeah, go on. and they asked it they asked the, the bosses really if this project of coming back into Formula 1 was building a house whereabouts are you are you at the foundations are you at the wall are you at the roof or is it finished and they did say that they, they're putting on the roof which is to be fair, that's where they've got to be because we've given us as fans and us as media have given them a lot of slack because, you know, like, oh, Renault, just getting back into it, just getting back into it. And yeah. 20, like 2016, yeah, they just picked up the pieces from Lotus and they had a no, they, they, were, they were at the back. 2017, they made that one step forward, which was very impressive. And with Hulkenberg at the wheel, it really did help. Then last year, with a science, certain science coming in, they made even more strides. They had a slight little blip in the middle, but they managed to pick up fourth in the championship. But now you do look at it and go, this is a works team. They've got money behind them. This is it. I mean, yeah, they don't have as it. much money because they've admitted that as well. Like, mm. like They, they want to spend as much. They don't have the, the ability to spend as much as Merck and Ferrari and Red Bull. But they have, some, they have more funding than the midfield. So they should be making that step of permanently being their P4 for now. Yeah. Um, I'd, so I'd, I'd like to think this is the year where we say Hulkenberg will be a podium finisher in F1. Ooh. That's kind of what I'm looking at. I think, I, honestly, I, I think Ricardo would be the one that gets the maybe one or the two. The surprise, podiums for him. yeah, the surprise. We never know. To, to be fair, it'd be very That's interesting be to see battle. what the two drivers uh, yeah, are like against each the other. The battle between those two, I think, would be very interesting to see because obviously Hulkenberg. Prime. That's the first big yardstick for Hulkenberg, and then for Ricardo, it's pretty much how does he fare in a different environment from Red Bull. Mm. So, also, as well, they have got the bragging rights. They did set the fastest lap time of they did. testing. They did. They set a, uh, what was it, a 117.393 on a new set of the fastest compound available. So, bragging rights, well done. Uh, to, we'll give them an imaginary award for getting the fastest. <laughs> you know, by the testing times, it's going to be a Renault v. Toro Rosso fight this year, guys. Well, yeah, so, I, can't, know, I, can, I frankly can't That's wait. That's my <laughs> inside <laughs> intel. I'm telling you now. It's uh, <laughs> Renault v. Toro Rosso. <laughs> yeah, I've looked at my sources, and they're telling me it's Renault v. Toro Rosso. But um, after Renault, uh, has uh, the rich energy, better than Red Bull team. Um, so the car, let's... Um, talk about the livery for a second because we didn't really mention it but uh, do you guys like it first of all no i don't think, I don't think you you can dislike it but you oh. cannot like it. no no no, <laughs> no, wait. I think, no I, wait. I very much i think wait. you can dislike wait. it wait wait <laughs> let me you i don't think you there's reason to dislike it but i don't think you can like it either it's not the I mean, gold, it's black and gold the gold, black and gold. The gold you can't go wrong you can go wrong because they have gone wrong the, the gold <laughs> is not gold enough. It's too brownish. Yeah, it needs more gold it's as well. It's too brown. It's too brown, first of all, the shade of gold. And then the side of it, the more I look at it, the worse it gets. It really does look gopping from the side. Mm. 
it it's not bad. It's just the fact that if you're going for a black exactly. and gold it's livery, don't dominate it with ninety percent black. Use some more gold. Get a bigger. You know, if you know, rich energy. I'm sure they're they're the company that would do this. That would agree with me. Get a bigger logo on the side of that thing on the engine cover. It mm. really flex the muscle of the fact you're a title sponsor. Um, <laughs> It's just very dark. It's just a very, yeah. I mean, which is obviously just, I mean, it's very rare for me to say this because obviously people are comparing the 2014 cars to the 2019 cars and just the colours. And back then we had silver, a silver McLaren, a silver Mercedes. We had a black Sauber. We had, you know, it, it wasn't, good. it was, yeah, a white Williams. It just looked, it just was a bit bland back then so i can't really slate it too much because it's nice to have a range because at the minute we've got pink yeah, it's yellow nice to have orange a black and gold car, but, but yeah. i don't know just it's do really better like from a scale of one to ten of how well they've done black and gold i feel like they're a solid two for me like, i thought we were taking well i thought we were all. taking a step up with yeah I, I, the way i look at it is liveries. i look at the, i look at their past three liveries and i compare it to this one i'm like okay their previous ones weren't that great anyway so no, i'll give this one a wasn't. pass like yeah, this is probably enough. their best. This is probably their best livery fair they've enough. ever had, compared yeah. to their past three. So I'm kind of glad that got picked. To be fair gray, as well, red, black. Even gone, the Haas logo isn't really that attractive, really. It's just yeah, fair enough. They yeah. just put Haas on the side. Yeah, and... yeah. In terms of their, it's not just like a livery. They just could have done so much more. In terms of their performance, um, we, well, they had Superior a very quiet testing. They had a lot of shot offs on day three, I think it was, and day two. Yes. Um, yeah. I very much think that if their season's going to be like testing, it's going to be very much what they had last season, where it's up and down, and up and down, that. <laughs> and bipolar, basically. Yeah, I hope they uh, hope the will not so good. Um, because <laughs> yeah. rich uh, energy will not. <laughs> yeah, well, you're going to have to buy them off Amazon as well because you won't be able to buy those in the shops. Um, yeah. No, they probably had the most amount, apart from Williams, who obviously didn't turn up for the first two days, they probably had the most amount of problems out of any team. They sh- stopped yes. twice, like Grosjean stopped twice on track with electrical issues and fuel pickup issues. Very strange to say it's fuel pickup, bearing in mind it's just a Ferrari product. Um very odd that they've had so many issues but then again this is i'd rather have the issue they might have issues now but I, I think it just looks odd because no one else has had problems it's very very peculiar um and i think that's why i think a lot of the teams are just nailing reliability just because obviously last season we had the three engine rule and then teams and manufacturers are just pushing that even harder just to be absolutely bulletproof because who knew that if you if you finish every race you pick up quite a few points? Um, <laughs> yeah. d- never knew that. I think Ricardo oh. definitely didn't know that. Thank you for uh, that information. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, apart from that, they still had some solid decent pace. I'm not. What was their fastest lap? Where were they on the board? They were down in uh, quite low down. 13, 14. and P14. Yeah. But obviously, mm. times don't matter. To be fair, but um, and they weren't ever on the fastest tire. They just uh, they won C three. They just I feel like they're they're a team that just along with Racing Point they just did their thing. They just plodded along, did their thing. But then again, with Kevin Magnussen, he had a his interview. He was still very positive. He was he very much had his like chest everyone, puffed though. out. Everyone was yeah. positive, so I feel like there needs to be. I think, I think there's this year there's differences on how positive everyone is. Yeah, we need a positive gauge. Yeah, yeah I think I can't believe I'm not positive. Them. Will Buxton made a good point. Last year, it was glaringly obvious that they were probably the fourth best team. This year, uh... yeah, very much not so. I, I would, I would bet that it's a fight of Renault and Alfa Romeo for P4. Yeah, Haas, I, I, I think throw, they're I, slipping. I, I want to throw McLaren in there. I want to throw McLaren into that best of the rest. I like McLaren. I like the vibe I'm getting from them. Hmm. To be honest, see, I like the, vo- I like the vibe, but like I said last year, I've had enough of their shit. So I like the, <laughs> I, I can, I like their vibe again this year. I like the vibe, but I'm not saying anything until I see the results on track. Because but do you know what? It does bode well. Because because it... Pretty much last year was my last straw <laughs> of giving a crap about them in terms of like you know believing in them. So mm. I will now wait until we see some results. But speaking What's about McLaren, though, just, that just is the mentioning, next team. yeah, speaking of McLaren and just speaking about the midfield. The the problem the, the good thing is the fact that we can't point out the fourth best team just means that the midfield is going to be crazy once close. again. Sergio and Perez it already said that. has been ridiculous. Sergio Perez said that he thinks it's going to be very very close, like a couple of tenths. You're talking, and I feel like this is field. why these midfield teams are trying to nail reliability so much is because not only obviously the very obvious thing that I just said about picking up points, but I feel like they, they don't want to be arriving to a race weekend think about reliability when they've got to literally they could literally find a tenth and they might be four places higher 
that's how close yeah, I feel like yeah. this midfield might be might yeah. be. But McLaren and their very orange car. Um, and then you line up Sainz and Norris yes. looking good. Uh, Sainz very complimentary of them on the first day. Um, obviously, the first two days they definitely did some glory runs because they were yes. second fastest on both days, and then they slipped down the order. And the long run, long run pace in day three and four definitely looked like okay. Let's bring them down to earth a little bit. It still looks like they're very much in the midfield fight. Yeah, looking, um, look, let's hope their car's quite heavy. So uh, to um, say the least. But but I mean, but, apart from that, I mean, in terms of laps, laps they did so much more than any of the previous years. So that's a big positive for them. Yeah, listen, at the end of the day, right, with McLaren, and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the old experience talk here. <laughs> Back in I my how, day, I know, I know how Alonso's career has gone, and everywhere he goes, it goes wrong. He's not there anymore. You watch; they will be good. <laughs> Same as when Ferrari, when he left Ferrari, yeah, it's just the way it goes. I know his career. Well, um, they you have, know, um, McLaren, so not I, only I, it's I not just drivers vibe. that they've reshuffled; they have shuffled a bit in the, the, in, in the behind the scenes. Gives me a lot of confidence. Yeah, because James Key was announced to arrive in March, which is earlier than expected, and he won't have. You could say he might have input towards the second half of the season. Uh, maybe on the car. Yeah. And then also they've got the guy from Porsche whose name I can never remember. But that's uh, obviously... Yeah, from the WC, yeah. There, but there is winning pedigree there for a strong manufacturer like Porsche that demands winning. So it could be fresh eyes for maybe fresh approaches. There's positivity and, uh, surrounding them, but it's just, it's just... I think it's just more the reliability. Just you compare the preparation that they've had for this season yeah. compared to They're the also, last... They were the only God team... God knows how many seasons. They were the only team that physically launched their car like actual yep. the actual 2019 car and well, also the sport, they're man. a team that didn't hide anything their car they turned up to a testing was the actual car you saw at launch like a lot of teams hid stuff so i think that just says a lot about also they're just taking it honestly this season like in terms of when journalists asked them what their target was they every single team member was obviously probably told not to say anything because no yeah. one said an actual number yeah. target because they know like and that's what i'm saying like i like i've had i've had enough of their shit basically and they now finally see that. They're not anymore saying we're aiming for P4. They're saying, you know what, we're just doing our best and we'll see where we are. If that's mm. P6, P7, so be it. But we're trying our best now. We're built, rebuilding the team up again. And so that's why I'm kind of like, you know, props to them. But at the same time, you know, continue with that. I, I and many fans of maybe their their, their team, because I still have a soft spot for them, you know, uh, we'll, we'll see what it's like. But the vibe, like, Tom, you, you really were liking it uh, when we talked about it earlier in testing in the middle of the week. You know, their vibe is so much better. Yeah, I think, listen, at the end of the day, right, I've, I've seen McLaren come and go for a long time. And I made the point in our DM chat the other day, like, there was a time, you know, when the whole McLaren-Honda kind of master power, I don't know what to call it, but just the, the superpower together, in, you know, in the 80s and 90s, once that ended in 1991, 92-ish, um, they went on a really bad run until 98 when Hacken won the championship. It was a solid six years of nothing, you know. Um, they went through three different engine suppliers, um, really weird aerodynamic designs and they basically threw everything at it, you know, and um, it just took a bit of a reshuffle and a bit of a change to really, along with a bit of regulation change for it to kind of click for them. And for me, you look at McLaren, I think this year will depend a lot on Renault and their engine as well for them because I feel like, like we mentioned with Honda, it definitely seems like they've done a step up so Renault need to accordingly respond. Yeah. And mm -hmm. also, I think aerodynamically McLaren, that's the best car they've had in a lot of years. Because last year, I remember it was so bare bones when it launched. Have you like seen we, you the know, packaging at the back as well? Yeah, like, like that this is year's McLaren coat looks like and a half. even aerodynamically, you could argue, can compete. Like, like yeah. in the last few years, it just looked like a, a barren car, both with sponsors and aero that just belongs at the back of the grid. Like last year, we was like, how the hell are they expecting to be pushing for? You know, it does feel rest. like they've just got lots of they've got rid of dead wood and as bad as it is like sometimes you see you see it in football as well this is a very strange analogy but like when you've got one certain player who's really good but and he's got this whole yeah. thing around him about he's really good and the whole media is like yeah he's really good he's really good but why is nothing else working for example Eden Hazard I'm going to throw him <laughs> into the mix hey. if a, a certain Chelsea fan here in the regards of Tom once you get rid of that good player it might take a bit of rebuilding. It might take a little bit, but I think it is a very good way to start a clean slate. And having two new drivers who seem to have a lot of banter between them, uh, Sainz and uh, Lando Norris are getting along extremely well. I feel like there is a positive force and it would be nice just to see McLaren back up there with their very good looking car. And well, you let's make, you see. You make a good point because with the whole reshuffling thing, 
unlike Chelsea, which have a board and people upstairs that I do not trust, <laughs> McLaren have also restructured their entire upstairs area from Zach Brown downwards, which mm. if you look at it on paper, it looks like the right move. They've got a good lineup. They've got a good looking car, not in terms of looks, I mean, in terms of aero, it looks like a competitive car. They've even copied the Mercedes rear wheels, like you mentioned before. Um, you're ho- kind of hoping the engine would be there or thereabouts as well with Renault if they made the progress like they say they have. And then everyone around that in terms of staff and personnel, they've all got good CVs and, um, you know, th- it passes the eye test for me. It definitely looks like they've turned a corner. Simple yeah. as that. Even I, don't, I, don't think yeah. we'll, I don't think you'll see results soon. But no, I, I think the, the turning the turning the corner point. is I think looking up for, upwards from where they were, which is P six just due to their points at the start of the season, and yeah, probably like exactly. P nine by the end of the season on actual pace. So I think they still have a long, long road, but it's looking good in terms of they're now looking in the right direction. Um, yeah. So let's rattle through two teams that I don't think there's a lot to really say about them in testing, which is Racing Point and Toro Rosso and Williams really. Because uh, Racing Point, Toro Rosso, they just did their business, really, um, throughout testing. Racing Point, especially, didn't hear a lot about them on the timeline or in the news, really. Uh, Perez, you know, t- obviously, it's a, it's a fresh start for them. They just feel, you know, good that now they've got financial backing and they've got security now from now on. For yeah. pretty much well, they've it. got big, big ad- objectives to push on and be a, a big well, team. Well, yeah, they want to aim for P4 this year and then they want to see where they can go. Um and there was a lot of just constant reassurance of like, see, look, now everyone in the team's just a lot more relaxed in terms of we know now we're not going to go into these issues we had last year of, you know, having to make a new team and maybe, oh, we have to go mm. into administration. They're now solid. Yeah. Well, it's very good you bring that up because I think we do have to take a bit of a pinch of salt for Racing Point this year because just because their development will have been hampered by their little yeah, blip last they've season. They've said they, their chassis is pretty much last similar. year's chassis. Yeah, it's, like, Just, it's been yeah. homologated this for this year's regs. And apart from a 2019 front wing and a 2019 rear wing, and there's some maybe the extra little bits on the side, it is pretty much the 2018 car. And Apparently they're bringing a brand new car for Australia, though. That's what I've heard. Yes, no, they're, they're, that's what I've heard as well. But obviously that's also why they didn't run a lot car. and do many different test runs because so they didn't actually have enough parts there at the track as well. Yeah, uh, Perez we, said, we so. can't really talk about that team properly. And I feel like the first half of the season might be a bit of a catch up yeah. for Racing but, no, Point. I mean, but I mean, if the they is, can, Force they did have a twenty. They had a solid twenty eighteen car though. That's what for, we realized. Force India, you got to remember. I think it was twenty fifteen. They turned up with last year's car at testing in that year. And they came yeah. fifth in that championship that year. So they're a team that yeah. can waste, basically, testing sometimes. And still Wasn't do 2015 well. in the year where they had, like, a B-spec car, like, midway through the season? When yeah. they introduced the nostrils? Yeah, well, and so, they, yeah, they turned up to testing late. They turned up to testing with last year's car. And then halfway through the season, they brought a new car. So They've done they, it once. They've done, they've done it, it once. Before. They could do it twice. Um, yeah, they can easily do it again. With Toro Rosso, um, just a solid, solid run with Honda, obviously, Albin... Uh, Fiat coming back and looking pretty good Albon coming in obviously as uh, the, the driver that maybe think he didn't have an F1 chance and now he does and I've got mm. to say in interviews he, he sounds like a really nice chap really he really seems like a sound lad really I, honestly earth. I'd love to buy him a pint really, yeah, he seems yeah, sound really, really down to earth um, and obviously times don't matter but they were 2-3 so obviously with our amazing analysis they're going to be <laughs> fine for the championship with Hulkenberg oh yeah because so. yeah could, be, could well be world champion next torpedo year torpedo we know. all wanted to see well it's interesting we talk about Kvyat really because apparently he is looking like his old self which is good to see he does old seem like he's got in. his when he is first in, arrived when he happy first arrived self. happy yeah. 2014 Kvyat the happy which self is. the happy whereas, self whereas and then obviously Albon is a fresh bit inside they've got the Honda which is obviously proved very positive last year but I think in Toro so it's just about getting those steps again see where they are um, and yeah as we said they are they are, they are boasting through testing, but we'll see how testing week yeah. week two goes. And then we move to and see how Australia goes for an them as well. Exciting team, which is the Alfa Romeo Racing Team, because they have I obviously you were say they have, <laughs> I thought it was as well. <laughs> they, have, they have Raikkonen this year, and Raikkonen already looks a lot happier. Like I said, they've got a young gun Giovinazzi, who I, I think I, I do rate still, even despite in a very uh, tricky start to F one with Sauber previous uh, years with those uh, one off races. And then, in terms of their car and also the personnel they've got, it's looking really positive. You know, they've got the Ferrari designer that came across last year. The front wing is the most extreme front wing of the entire grid. And many think that if that works for them, obviously we don't know yet, but if it does work for them as a front wing design, it could be a silver bullet because 
that's going to be very tricky to copy in three months time like it's going to take yeah. a team a full three four months to copy that design and make it work because you have to change much everything a positive vibe around alpha just the fact yeah. that uh, did you know what? it's just surreal saying alpha it's just quite it's, good. It's nice to have another Italian outfit, really, honestly. Just, the group, and like a manufacturer. A, yeah, just yeah. Alpha. Because it's, it's that Top Gear style. You know when uh, when uh, they're talking about Italian cars and Richard Hammond kind of made fun of the Italian exuberance of, you know, they do the marketing when the Germans make the car. They yeah, do yeah, the marketing yeah. beginning and go, it's got a million horsepower and it's got uh, <laughs> wings and turbo. It's it's like that. It's the good feel vibe of Italians. There's just a kind flamboyance of going, Yeah, the them, flamboyance is, of that. But the, it's very level-headed within the actual... Within the personnel though like yeah because it's still swiss Fred it's still half is... a swiss team yeah so it... it's a lovely blend of <laughs> grounding swissness and then flamboyant italianism <laughs> that <laughs> is one still, funky meal the factory still is uh, back at switzerland <laughs> it's uh, it's still a swiss team so you know it's yes. just on the side of the car powered by sauber still they've given it that respect yeah it's yeah. a sauber engineering they still got the it's going to be weird they still got the slightly odd. on the rear wing so there is not still not saying sauber it is still you know the, the the team that runs the alpha Romeo team is still called sauber motorsport that's the company that enters mm. the car it's just a it's just a kind of marketing obviously of alpha Romeo racing and obviously alpha as a company is a lot more invested in in f1 now they're pumping yeah. a lot of money into that side and, you know, they've come to the grid with an aggressive-looking car, innovation, which is good to see. And like I said, Raikkonen is now free of the Ferrari shackles and can really just go for it. And again, like with yeah. McLaren, they're not setting a target. But I think McLaren, yep. I mean, I think Paddock insiders feel that if their wing works and that car works as well as it lo- is looking like, it could be a very, very naughty year for Alfa Romeo. Yeah, I mean, if you look at Raikkonen, for example. I think he's going to be a dark horse this year. I do as well. Always li- I've, all, I've always liked Kimi. And the, f- the proof is in the pudding. Last season, when around Monza, when he got pole, turns out now in hindsight, we know he was informed that he was going to get released just before Monza. From Monza onwards, most races, he was <laughs> driving well. Quick. And yeah, he went out. Uh, he went out and got that Sauber, uh, Sauber at the time, Sauber deal by himself. Like we, we, the the reports afterwards said, there was no collusion really. There's might have been a little bit of helping in terms of like, oh, it might be easier to take Kimi because you were a Fry driver. But Kimi went out on his own because he could have just retired then, but he wanted yeah, to continue easily, driving. Easily. He wanted to drive, and he and That's he got that. Thing. And um, yeah, I think it's just a case of. Uh, you know, last year I was critical of Raikkonen, more so Ferrari's handling of Raikkonen. Because, it, you know, you've you got to admit that Vettel was the number one driver in that team. And so some yeah. decisions they made at Germany and stuff basically lent me to say statements like they should have stopped Kimi you know, going for that token win at Germany, which infuriated people at the time when I said it. But I still stand by it. In that situation, it was a token yeah, win definitely. because Vettel was the main man. But now it, there's, no, no, there's no tokenness about it. Raikkonen's the main guy at Alfa Romeo, Gio's the young gun. And so I feel like, you know, last year maybe it, I, it felt like I was very negative about Raikkonen. It was really just more the situation of, you know, he is clearly the, the number two guy, so he should have been doing number two stuff. But now, go for it, Kimi, mate. Yeah. I think uh, it's really great to see There's him There's no expectations surrounding Kimi at all. And yeah. he just do the job. It would jo- be do exciting the ma- to see what he like does. It's like he said in an interview, just he wants to basically, him and the team are just going to try and do the best they can. And where that is, we'll see. So just drive yeah. the car. That's yeah. what they want. That's a yeah. That's a very Kimi answer. I'll just drive the car. That's it. I drive the car. <laughs> I hope I go fast. <laughs> it's simple. That's all that so we're going to finish off then with Williams, the toothpaste themselves. The um, aqua fresh men. Well, um, not, not turning so up for the first two days is not ideal. Um, Some embarrassing reason which they will not tell. So it's obviously not down to funding. Well, it's they're saying they're saying Paddy Lowe is maybe you know he's on the teetering edge maybe of. Maybe being fired or something like that because uh, he's obviously in charge of the entire car. So it's kind of, you know, if you've got to blame someone, you've got to blame the top man, basically. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know, obviously. Williams are in a very dire situation. Uh, their car finally turned up and obviously it looked quite basic. Um, and I think from all the analysts, they're saying don't expect Williams to make a huge step up. They possibly have made a little step, but not the big step up that I think their fans are going to want. Um, yeah, well, it's... if you look at the if you look at the grid, every team looks either a step up or just really well rounded. This year, with Williams, 
it feels like they could be a way off. Like last year, they were kind of at the bottom, but they could compete in like Monza, Baku. But this yeah. year just feels like they're a solid. Solo it's going to be a hard year for them. Team. It's going to be a hard year for them. Such a shame to say because it, it's the first time Williams have ever turned up late. Yep, to a test ever in, ever in, history. in their it's, whole it's, lifetime. It's, it's hard because you got You always got to remember Williams have been a top F1 team, which They've is really laughable to say yeah. because. If you think about the modern era, they've really not been anywhere near that. So, apart from maybe a little, a little, a little blip years. in 2012, but and you know 2014 they came third because purely of the engine, really. Um, they have won a championship in 20 plus years. Yeah, their last championship was 96 with Damon Hill. Their last there constructors is was I don't know when. Calls to question about a certain Claire Williams. Um, I don't feel like she is fit for the job. I feel like the only reason she her CV fit is because her last name was Williams and that was an it of that there as well yeah, yeah I, I think agree. that I think the team they needs need to be harsh a, on her a and hard ruler with iron we, fist. yeah they need someone who can get their head down because it just seems that she speaks a lot she talks a lot but you just don't think she's going to follow through with what she's going to say and this is not like because she's a female it's literally just because I feel like it's that family thing of oh yeah we'll give it to I don't know. Yeah, I think the, the, the family thing is, uh, is uh, I think they need to drop that in terms of like, you know, just go out there and try yeah. and find the best person. Because you, you, you lose that, you can't be harsh. You feel like you can't be like, harsh. Even them like, a, like, a, like, a, like, like a, from Sauber, I can't remember her name, who had Sa- who did Sauber have as a team principal like a few years ago? Or was it Manisha? Uh, Cattleborn. Ka- yeah. Cattleborn, like, yeah. Even if, if she's still knocking about, maybe, if she wants a job in F1 again, even I think she would be a much better person to maybe take Williams because... Cattleborn was used to that situation of a bottom team, how to run it and how to run it efficiently. I think yeah. she would be a great pick, really. If, if she is still wanting a job in Formula 1, I, I say Williams need to call her up mm. because I think Listen, she would be a much better person to take on the job. On the topic of analogies, in my opinion, you look at Williams and the way they're running, it kind of feels like Arsene Wenger's at the helm. And it, it just kind of... They've been there for so long now. It's kind of dying a slow death. Yeah, they need it, and it just needs a fresh up. They need a you new know, era Ferrari, that doesn't just example. involve a new livery. <laughs> yeah, like if, you look, if you look at Ferrari, you could argue, regardless of how they've done it, Arriva Bene might have been harsh attacking, considering the progress they've made since 2015 till 2018, um, having given a cha- having had a championship run in 2017 and 2018. But that's kind of maybe what Williams need a bit of harsh. Ruling, dare I say, someone like a Ron Dennis is yeah, what maybe Williams totally. might need. Um, but for me, I think Williams, there's just so many components there. You know, uh, Smedley left as well, so another kind of stable figure that's not there anymore. Yeah. And you kind of look at Williams and you're kind of thinking, who are the real kind of characters there, or personalities? If you know, Palos on the teetering edge, uh, you could who are the leaders, really, really? Exactly, you know, um, no one really leading lineup, that team at the moment. A good lineup who compared to last year. I think they'll be much stronger. Having said that, it the car is just toothpaste. <laughs> and on that one, it, <laughs> it is aqua fresh. Is that the last word we're going to say in this yeah, podcast? Um, I think uh, that is a good good ending. We need for to Williams, see. Honestly. Yeah, we need to see what uh, next week holds obviously, when yeah. it comes to yeah. their testing because they they barely pushed a hundred laps. They were. Yeah. Just kind of floundering around, just kind of shaking down their car. Bearing in mind, most yeah. teams, they shook their cars down at, for example, Silverstone or Fiorano. Like they, they, most I mean, teams have If you compare Ferrari's that. day one with Vettel, 160 plus laps, and then you look at Williams. Not having a car. Like, so, yeah. it's, it's never night and day. It's like yeah. universes so, apart. Yeah. You know? yeah. we'll, we'll see how they get on in testing too, and that will be the same for every team. Uh, obviously... Uh, testing 2 commences next week and we'll be back again with another podcast for Testing 2 and obviously that's the final bit of testing they can do before everyone goes away a little bit goes back to the factory and gets their actual race car ready for Australia so it's going to be a crucial time next week and we'll see if there's any bits and bobs in terms of new upgrades made for some teams and if uh, you know the likes of Williams can do a bit better and if there's any change in that kind of feeling for teams like Ferrari and whatnot but um, lads that was a very nice chat 
to start off the 2019 it was. season. We're back. Yeah, we're, we're back, back at it again. Back at it again for another season of the Pit Lane Podcast. Guys, uh, hopefully you can join us for the entirety season again and continue to support the podcast. It's been really great to see a lot of you guys asking a lot about where the podcast is, when is it coming back, and uh, so hopefully those of you who are looking forward to it are happy about it. So if you have enjoyed this first episode of the 2019 season, then be sure to hit that like button. Let us know your thought in the comments below. And uh, like, like I would have said already in the intro video to the podcast, series for this season uh you can find us now on many different platforms we're on soundcloud itunes spotify as well so three different ways you can listen to us audibly on the go on your phone and obviously we're going to always do it on youtube and then obviously if you do primarily listen to it on audio you know obviously we make most of our revenue from youtube and there's no revenue from those audio ones so if you do really like the podcast you're an avid supporter you tune in every single week if you do have a spare one dollar or five dollar it would be really appreciative if you maybe want to support us on patreon as well all the links to all those platforms and websites in the description below and obviously finally you can also support us in a different way it's a bit of a left field way but if you do want a racing chair or an office chair you can actually check out gt omega and use the code pit lane f1 over there and that directly supports us as well what we do around here but yeah guys 2019 i think it's going to be a really cracking year i can't wait for the first race it's an exciting time so many changes for drivers the cars liveries whatnot personnel looking forward to it but obviously we'll be back for testing week two next weekend Till then, guys, hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye.